What is up, Internet? I'm Gregory LaPerch, and I just finished reading The Girl and the Stars by Mark Lawrence, which is his most recent release, and it's the first in a trilogy. Also, I buddy read this book with Mark from the channel Slowly Read. I will link his channel in the description if you want to subscribe. Mark's channel is awesome. He lives in Alaska, so like this was like kind of the perfect book for him because of like the whole Tundra Wasteland thing. But I'm sure he'll have a video coming up about this book too, so look out for that. If it's not already up, if it is up, I'll post it in the comments, yeah. And it takes place in the same universe as, what is it called? I haven't read the other books. So it takes place in the same universe as the Book of the Ancestor trilogy which includes Red Sister, Grey Sister, and Holy Sister. I've not read any of those, and I don't think you really have to read anything before you read this. You could just hop right in if you like the sound of it. And yeah, three mo or two more books are coming out at some point, so if you like this one, that's something to look forward to. And I overall like this book, I would say. Even though it's not really right up my alley, there's, um, I mean, it's a fantasy book, so I like that. But it's kind of more like survivalist fantasy, which I haven't actually like read too much that is like this gritty. But basically, you start the book following around a character named Diaz, and she is a girl who is like 17, and her and her tribe live on the ice in like the North Pole, basically, or like the most northern part of the world. And basically, the world itself is covered in ice. It's kind of like post-apocalyptic. And they're in this sort of ice age. But, you know, life still exists. And they're going to, like, this meeting ritual thing that goes on every five years. Her and her tribe. And at this ritual, they throw kids into a giant pit. And I'm not going to give anything else away, um, but Yaz is young enough to potentially fall into the giant pit. And it's supposedly like so deep that you die if you fall in. Um, or at least that's the like impression that I got. But yeah, weird ritual, right? Definitely hooks you in right away. The plot of this book, extremely fast paced. Oh my gosh, so many things happen so quickly. I would say maybe around page like like 30 to 80, nothing happens really. And there are a few lulls, but overall, extremely fast pace. You know, I'm not like a survival person. I don't care, you know, what things people can and can't eat if they're like living on the land, you know. But if you like that stuff, like it would be even faster pace for you. And I think you would love this book because the story itself as well. Oh, man twists and turns in terms of plot twists. Mark Lawrence definitely suspends expectations, or my expectations at least, multiple times. Lawrence's world building is very good, I would say. Basically all parts of the world building I like, except for the magic system, to me was a bit confusing, but maybe I would have gotten it more if I read the other trilogy because maybe the magic was somewhat similar but some of it was like very easy to understand and like some of it you know eh, it could have been explained a little bit more clearly a little earlier in the book because like I said it was super fast paced and I feel like we could have had like more of a second to breathe and talk about the magic system more clearly the characters <sighs> I didn't care about the characters too much because it was so plot-based. Towards towards the end, I did care more for the characters. But, you know, the first half, there was just a lot of characters coming at you in the book. Or the first third of the book, I would say. And it, it was just too much, you know? A few too many characters that, you know, just melded together and didn't really stand out. A lot of people had names that began with an E. It was very confusing for <laughs> for me. I had to go back multiple times because I'm like, is this the same person? Why why do like three people in the same situation all have names starting? Anyway, Yaz was 
you know, she seemed like a fairly basic character. It kind of had the trope of, you know, a girl who's like a teen in her mid-teens who like doesn't understand that like every boy likes her and like it led to some, you know, I wouldn't say like this was like a hard romance book or anything, but like there was definitely like love triangle-ish situations, Uh, but it definitely was not, you know, romance focused at all. Also, it was weird from like her perspective because, you know, she had grown up on, like, this barren tundra wasteland, and, you know, you you can't, like, really get intimate if it's negative 300 degrees, or you can't, like, you can, but you really can't. But, like, she was talking about, like, their hand brushed my hand, and it's like, oh my god. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I mean, it made sense in the world, obviously. Yeah, so for me, I don't know, four-star book, which is good. (laughs) Like, for the first half of the book, I thought it would be much lower, my rating, just because of, like, the things I mentioned, like, being confused about the magic system a bit, and, like, the magic system was soft, and I don't really like soft magic as much, you know, the survivalist sort of elements. You know, I didn't, like, hate it, but it's definitely not up my alley. But, you know, the plot comes together very well at the end. A lot of fun, exciting things happened. For me, I still like King of Thorns more by Mark Lawrence, even though it's the second book in a series. But this this might be my second favorite Mark Lawrence book. I've only read The Broken Empire, though, so... Still got a lot of other reading to do, maybe, of Mark Lawrence's editing greg here i forgot to say that i'm about to talk about spoilers so click off if you do not want any spoilers at all all right now i'm just gonna rant a bit and again overall like the book whatever whatever but so like the part where at the end they're holding on to the cage cow is holding on to the cage and the cage is hanging from a wire so he's a giant man on the cage and then he's got like two like three people hanging from him, right? How is the cage not like like going that way? Like the cage should like tip and he'll like lose hold maybe? I uh, I don't know. Uh maybe like that did happen and he grabbed onto the bars of the cage and I just like missed that part. But that I mean that was confusing to me cuz just like weight distribution, right? It would tip that way also oh yeah i do have to say uh the part with the bridge with the chasm that patrick or patrick whatever falls into i i was like <laughs> i was like 90 percent sure yaz was gonna fall into that just because she already fell into like the massive death hole at the beginning obviously and then she fell into like the virtual reality but like she entered it from like a falling perspective and it's like oh my god she's gonna fall for a third time but i was wrong but it just made me laugh the bridge with like the the death fall under it which we didn't we wouldn't even like know if it was a death fall or not i guess also the magic system a little basic It felt like The Incredibles, you know, like the dad is like a giant strong dude. Maya's like the invisible person. And then like the fast people, like Zine is like the, you know, the the boy. And then like the baby is Yaz because you don't, you like don't know what the baby can do and you don't know what Yaz can do. I was very confused by like her getting the magic from the river because it felt like she was doing it like every day and she kept being like, I can't do this every day. I need like a week to recharge. But I guess it made sense. She was getting power from the stars. Maybe even like subconsciously she was getting power from the stars. So yeah, and that also makes sense with how it ended too. They could have, because like her magic is unique and rare and like only the stars light up when she's around. Um, maybe that's just, like, a rare thing that only, like, her and the priests have, and, like, the priests wanted her because she has this unique power, but, like, beyond that, your guess is as good as mine for what happens in the next book, right? They're gonna lower the cage again. Are they gonna, like, f- let it free fall and just, like, drop the cage, or are they gonna, like, you know, slowly roll it back down 
and all the people on in there are just gonna be like gone you know i don't know also another weird part is they kind of like got out of things in the same way like the water levitation trick and like maya just like assassinating people but you know it made sense because like it's not like they would expect Maya to come out of nowhere, even though she had done that before. She did it in a very different situation with different people around. So, like, yeah, it makes sense, even though it's the same thing. And yeah, tell me if you like this video. I didn't take notes. I, like, literally just finished this book, and this has been, like, very just bleh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, tell me if you guys agree, disagree, like the book, don't like the book. Um, overall, I'd recommend the book. And yeah, like, comment, subscribe. I don't know what I'm doing with my arms. What is this motion? Is this like a, is this like a foul in football? Like, traveling? That's basketball? I <laughs> Traveling. What is the hand signal for traveling? This is going to bother me. It's definitely not this. It's like arms are wider, maybe? Oh, it's this. Ah, okay. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, this video is so off the rails. All right, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, see ya.